Well, praise the Lord and welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study here at Living Faith Christian Center. It is our prayer that you've had a wonderful week and you're having a wonderful day. And in, even if you're not, we still declare that this is the day that the Lord has made. You ought to rejoice and be glad therein. Amen. We want to welcome all of our viewers, our, all of our first-time viewers. If you are a first-time viewer, whether you're watching by Facebook or whether you're watching by YouTube, go ahead and help us right quick. Hit that share button for you and then also to all of our members. Hit their share button so that you can help us to evangelize all of those persons that are connected to you that they might be better for hearing the word of God. Amen. Thank you for doing that. God bless you. And we declare over your life that you are blessed and highly favored of the Lord. Let us go into prayer before we open up the bread of life. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come to give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory. Lord, we thank you. Because, Lord, you're an awesome God. You're a mighty God. You're a good God. You're a God that cares about us. You're a God that loves us. You are a God that fights for us. And, Lord, we declare glory and honor unto your name. God, in the midst of everything that's going on in the world today, we thank you that you have said that the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof the world and they that dwell therein. We thank you that nothing catches you by surprise. We thank you that you always have an answer to whatever ails us and whatever ails us in society. And you gave it to us through the blood of Jesus Christ, who is the head of our lives. Now, God, we thank you for the word of on tonight that as we open up the bread of heaven, Lord, you pour out manna from on high to feed us until we want no more. God, we thank you right now, Father, in the name of Jesus Lord, I pray, I pray that the word of God ministers to those that are hearing, minister to those that are watching, God, that whatever the need is, God, right now you meet that need, whether it be a physical need, whether it be a spiritual need, whether it be an emotional need. Lord, we know that you are a need meter and you can do everything but fail. And we thank you in advance for meeting the need of your people on tonight. We give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Tonight I would like to teach from a passage of scripture that is very familiar to those of us who are born again believers. We've heard this scripture, we've quoted this passage of scripture, we've stood on this passage of scripture. And that's what you do with the word of God. You stand on the word of God, no matter what the situation is, because the word of God is our solace in a time of need. And so the scripture that we'll use tonight will be coming from Psalm 91, Psalm 91. Because with the current environment that we are living in, with, with the virus breaks out, with what's going on in Haiti, with, with the fires over on the West Coast, what's what we see happening in, in Afghanistan, where people are literally trying to jump on a moving airplane just to escape the land that they live in, we need to declare Psalm 91. And let everything know that God is still in control and he has preeminence over everything. Amen. The word of God says in Psalms 91, we'll read verses 1 through 16. We'll get into some discussion and we'll break down this scripture, these scriptures on tonight. The word of God said, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Thou shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in the darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth away at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation. There shall be no evil that befall thee, neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in thy hand, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. 
because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. He shall call me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Tonight, as I draw from this text, I want to teach from a subject entitled, The Assurance of God's Protection. The Assurance of God's Protection. And if I were to use a subtext on tonight, I would entitle that subtext, I'm safe in his arms. When I was a teenager in college, I came to Louisiana with no family and with one suitcase of luggage that contained everything that I owned and everything that I had. And be it as it may, while in college, challenges arose and being away from family for the first time, I found that it was difficult and hard to navigate life by myself. But before I left Chicago, I made a 90-minute gospel tape on a Tone Master cassette. Y'all millennials don't know nothing about a cassette tape. But I made a 90-minute gospel tape on a Tone Master cassette filled with inspirational songs from the local gospel station. And every Sunday in my dorm room, my roommate and I would play this cassette and treat it as our Sunday morning church service. And one of the songs that was on that tape was entitled Safe in His Arms by Reverend Milton Brunson and the Thompson Community Singers. Up until that time, I had never heard of this song, but because of what I was going through, the words of the song ministered to me and met me right where I was. And the song simply says, because the Lord is my shepherd, I have everything I need. He lets me to rest in the meadow's grass. He leads me beside the quiet stream. He restores my failing health, and he helps me to do what honors him the most. That's why I'm safe. That's why I'm safe. That's why I'm safe in his arms. Because when the storms of life are raging and the billows roll, I'm so glad that he hides me safe in his arms. That song in 1989 gave me the assurance that no matter what I was facing, no matter, no matter what I might face, there was a safety place in God that I could find protection in his arms from the storms of life. I found out through listening to this song that there was an actual place in God where he would hide me, cover me, and protect me. And so it is, as a believer, you have to know that we have the blessed assurance that God will protect us and keep us safe from anything that's coming against us. Now, now the word assurance, because I want you to understand what we're talking about when I talk to you tonight about the assurance of God's protection. So the word assurance defined says, being certain in the mind, the freedom from self-doubt or uncertainty, excessive confidence in something pledged. And I want you tonight, like never before, to have an assurance in your mind, to be free from self-doubt and any uncertainty, and to have an excessive amount of confidence that whatever God said to you, that's exactly what he's going to do according to his word. Because the word assurance carries with it the connotation that something that was promised shall come to pass no matter the opposition that comes to oppose that which was spoken in total confidence. And so because I understand this, and I understand how sometimes when, when that people will say, well, I believe God for this, but I don't believe him for this, because sometimes you're measuring the assurance of God based upon the lie of people. People have told you what they were going to do, how they were going to come through for you, how they were going to be there for you. But when you needed them in your time of trouble, they were not there. They, they couldn't help you the way they say they could help you. They, they couldn't support you the way they said they could support you. But can I tell you not to rate God the same way that you rate people, not to measure God with the same measuring stick that you use to measure people? Because at the, at the writer said in Numbers, God is not man that he should lie. But, but if God has declared it, if God has is decreed it, if you, if you find it in the word of God, then release your faith to believe God for that thing. 
Don't worry about your neighbor on the left. Don't worry about what happened to Sister Lolo. Don't worry about what happened to Brother Mike. Don't worry about what happened to other people. You release your faith for what it is that God said to you. Because what I understand is that when you have an assurance of the Lord, it's going to require something of you as a believer. It's going to require you to release your faith onto the word of God, despite the contrary wind that's coming against you to bring you to a place of doubt and fear. You have to release faith in the midst of serious opposition. You have to release faith when it don't look like things are working in your favor. You have to release faith when it doesn't look like the report that you receive is your report from God. You have to release faith so that faith can conquer doubt and faith can conquer fear. So in order to not operate in fear and doubt, you have to walk in the full assurance of the Lord, believing that through his word, that what he told you, that's exactly what he's going to do based on the integrity of his word. And I need to stop right there because I need you to understand that God's word is integrous. God said by when there was nobody else or nothing else to swear by, watch this y'all. He said, I swore by my own what? Name. He said, but even with that, I put my word. I put the very word, the very thing that I said. He said, I put my word above my name. As magnanimous as my name is, as mighty as my name is, as dynamic as my name is. He said, I hold my word in higher regard than my name because if I don't have no word I don't have no name y'all better hear me God said my word is integrous whatever I said you better believe it and you better trust that I'm gonna bring it to pass it, it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what I'm up against it doesn't matter how bad it looks what did God say about it according to his word so despite what you may have before you despite how challenging life may be you got to release your faith that says God is not slack he's not slack concerning the promise that he has toward me I know it might be a lot of bad news I know it might not be a lot of things that seem favorable but you have to understand that God's word supersedes the attack that's coming against you Yes, he does. It supersedes this virus that's in our land. You keep quoting what God said, and the virus got to go in Jesus' name. Huh? That's when you're taking authority. You, you, you put the word of God into the atmosphere, and, and you allow the word of God to fight its own fight. You, you just have to have enough faith to believe that what God said God is go do so. So for every believer who's listening under the sound of my voice, who's who who says I have a situation that looks like it's unrelenting, I I have a situation that's very trying, brother Will. I have a situation that seems like it's insurmountable, and it and it seems like it's too high to get over. That that is too low to get under. And and brother Will, I feel like I'm stuck in in the middle. Well, well, I come I come to get you tonight. I come I come to get you tonight. I come to shake you in this teaching tonight. I come, I, come to, I come to remind you tonight that God is a God that knows how to pick you up out of the mire and set you on a solid rock. I, I come tonight to let this teaching get you unstuck in that situation where you feel stuck and to strengthen your faith to where you will believe again that God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you may ask or think because you have an assurance from the word of God that he'll never leave you nor forsake you, but he'll be there with with you even until the end of the world you you have an assurance from God that if you speak to the mountain the mountain has got to get up and move and be thrown into the sea that you have an assurance from God that he will protect you from danger seen and unseen and that he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler you have to know that you got an assurance from God that no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper and every tongue that rises up against you thou shall condemn you got to know that you got an assurance from God God, that the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. You got to know that you got an assurance from God that when you walk through the water, it won't overtake you. When you go through the fire, it won't burn you. Why? Because God is in the fire with you. Somebody type on the screen, God is in this thing with me. He's in this thing with me. And you got to have an assurance that God is your protector. So when we talk about God as a protector, when we talk about God as a protector, it's important for you all to understand that the only way to know him as a protector 
is you have to have a personal and intimate relationship with him that causes you to meditate, watch this guys, on his word day and night. Because when you meditate on the word day and night, the Bible says, according to Joshua, that you shall have good, what y'all, success. Because you understand who God is because you've been meditating. I don't care what's coming against you. You've been meditating. You've been pondering this thing. You've, you've been thinking about how good God has been. That's why, that's why we say, when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul, my soul, my soul shout hallelujah because your soul reminisces and your soul remembers where you were when God picked you up, where you were when God found you, where you were when you were down and out and God turned it around for you. Because when you look at God from the scripture, the scripture tells you that he's a protector. Yeah. Why do you say that, Pastor Will? The scripture uses words that identify him as a protector. It says that he's our shield. It says he's our fortress. It says he's our hiding place. It says he's our shelter. It says he's our refuge. It says he's our rock. He's our stronghold. He's our front guard. He, he's our real God. And what, what does that mean, Pastor Will? That simply conveys the thought that God is fortification from the attacks of the enemy, that the attacks may come. Uh, the attack has a boundary that it cannot cross because the Lord is your wall of defense. <laughs> Let me help you. I'm going to use this right here. I'm going to use this. I'm going to use this plexiglass tonight. I'm going to be the Lord and this is going to be you. Uh, let me show you how God fortifies you. God sets a wall around you. Uh, that's why the that's why the David, the devil told God, the reason that I can't get to Job uh, is because you got a hedge of protection around him. Uh, and the only way that I can get to him uh, is if you move the hedge. Uh, and I come to tell somebody tonight uh, that God has a hedge uh, that is set around you, uh, that God is your fortifier, that God is the one that the enemy got to come through to get to you. Uh, and the devil, can I help somebody understand something? The devil don't want no fight with God. And so God said, I need you to know uh, that even though the attack may come, uh, the attack has a limit. The attack has a boundary. The attack can only go so far because as God told the devil, you can touch Job, but you can't touch his body. Why we? Why? Because even through everything Job went through, God had fortified Job. Y'all better understand this. God fortified him and built a wall around Job, a spiritual wall around Job. And that's what's around you and I right now. There's a spiritual fortification. There's a spiritual wall that can't nothing get through that wall except God allow it to get through. And if God allows it to get through, I need you to release your faith on Romans 8 and 28 that says all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. God would have never allowed it to come if he didn't give me the power to overcome it. God would have never allowed it to come if he didn't give me the faith to destroy it. God would have never allowed it to come if it wouldn't birth a testimony out of me to the goodness and the glory of God. Somebody type on the screen, God is my wall. Yeah, yeah. God is my wall. God is my wall. God, God is my wall. God, God protects me from dangers seen and unseen. God protects me and delivers me from toils and snares. God is the one who, who brings me out of the snare of the fowler. God is the one when they gave up on me in the hospital that'll heal my body. God is the one when they told me I had to file for bankruptcy. God will put it on somebody's heart to release the bankruptcy. God is the one that will cause your marriage that was headed for divorce for all of a sudden a or somebody to tell you that there's a call of God on your life and God has called you to be husband and wife together for what God has joined together let no man put us under why because there's a wall there's a wall there's a wall y'all there's a wall of fortification around me yeah. So, so what are you telling me? Telling me that for Pastor Will? Because I need you to have an assurance. We we about to get into this text, but I, but I, but I need you to have an assurance because because I feel like some believer, and it might not be you, it might be somebody you know. You're teeter tottering between faith and doubt. One minute I believe God because I feel good. But when I don't feel good, I'm back to saying, woe is me. But I come against that negative talk in your life because the Bible says life and death are in the power of the tongue. The Bible says a man shall be satisfied with the words that come out of his mouth. The Bible says you can't speak blessing and cursing out of the same fountain. So I'm going to give you a minute on tonight to open up your mouth and speak nothing but the goodness of God. 
God. Declare nothing but the goodness of God. Declare nothing but the power of God. Declare nothing but the awesomeness of God. Magnify his name. Let's exalt his name together because the Lord is still good and his mercy still endures forever. We're not worried about the virus. We declare that he's God of the virus. We're not worried about the economy. He's God of the economy because the Bible says that the government shall be upon his shoulders and the heart of the king is within his hand and like a river God will turn that thing God will turn that thing and I come to tell somebody tonight God's about to overturn it for you God's about to turn it in your favor give me Ezekiel chapter 21 verse 27 Ezekiel 21 and 27 because I need you to understand that sometimes the enemy tries to tell you that God ain't gonna do this for you you too far gone God has forgotten about you but can I remind the devil of something? The devil has seemed to have amnesia. The devil seemed to forget that when the children of Israel were by the Red Sea and they felt like they couldn't go no further, that God says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And as Moses held up the rod, the water separated from the east and the west. And the children of Israel, the Bible declares, about three million people were able to pass through the waters. But here come the devil, still chasing after them and the devil the Bible says Pharaoh and his army were drowned in the Red Sea I need you to be reminded that when the enemy had come against David that the Goliath was doing a lot of talking he was defying the armies of Israel and it didn't look good for Israel Israel went in hiding for 40 days not a soldier wanted to fight the king didn't want to fight but there was a little shepherd boy by the name of David who said is there not a cause and I come to shake somebody and tell you tonight is there not a cause for you to get back up for you to praise God for you to worship God for you to stand on the word and Goliath said you come to me with this little bitty slingshot and David said you well you got a spear and a bow but I come to you in the name of the Lord and this day I'm going to kill you Goliath and I declare that whatever's coming against you this this day is coming down. No more sickness, no more infirmity, no more disease, no more confusion. And just like David, I want you to begin to throw your rock. And when you throw your rock, God's going to get in your rock. And he's going to knock down anything and everything that tries to stand in the way and defy the power and defy the power of God because God is about to overturn it. Let me give you Ezekiel 21 and 27. I'm just talking, I'm just talking, but you understand this is how I am. I, I just feel a thing. <laughs> because I understand something, y'all. I understand something. The devil been lying to some people. He been trying to tell some people, you always go be sick. You always go be broke. You always go be single. Your kids always go be bad. But the devil is a liar. Look what Ezekiel says. I will overturn, overturn, overturn it. Now, Bishop has taught us before, whenever you see the replication or the reproduction of a word, whenever you see it being replicated again, it means that you need to take note because he's not just saying it just to say it but he wants you to really know that an overturn is coming Ezekiel said I will talking about God God will overturn it God will overturn it God will overturn it watch this and it shall be <laughs> no more he will give, he will come until it comes to the right one he said I will give it to him <laughs> and I come to tell somebody God's about to overturn that doctor report God's about to overturn that sickness. God's about to overturn this virus, y'all. God's about to overturn this foreclosure. Somebody type on your screen, overturn it, God, overturn it, God. That's what we declare right now. We lift up his name and declare because we know we got protection from him. God, you're about to turn this thing. You're about to turn it around and you're about to work it out for my good. Overturn it, overturn it, overturn it, overturn it. To overturn it mean to reverse it. God is about to reverse the decision. God is about to reverse the diagnosis. God is about to reverse the bad news. And you're about to get some good news because there's an assurance from the Lord. And that's why we sing the song, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. I'm an heir of salvation purchased by blood. 
And if you're purchased by blood, somebody type on the screen, I got an assurance. What's the assurance, Pastor Will? Everything is going to be all right. What's the assurance, Pastor Will? No weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper because God's about to over... He's about to overturn it. Stay right there, AJ. He's about to overturn it. He's about to overturn it right there in your home. Put your hands together. Give God some praise in your car, on your job, in that office. Give God some praise right where you are. Watching on Facebook, watching on YouTube. Lift up your hands for the overturn because it's about to be. He's about to reverse it. I feel a turn. I feel a turn. I feel a turn. God is shifting some stuff. He's shifting some stuff. He's shifting. Shift, shift, shift. Shift, shift, shift. I shall not fear. I shall not be afraid. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my, of my life and my salvation. David said, I would have fainted unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the... Overturn, overturn. Overturn, overturn. We're going to get off this, but I feel it right. Overturn, overturn. You've been getting bad news after bad news. Overturn, overturn. You've been getting bad report after bad report. Reverse, reverse, reverse. They don't even know how to diagnose you. They don't even know how to tell you what's wrong, but I hear it in my spirit. Reverse, reverse, reverse. God's about to restore everything that the palmer worm, that the canker worm, that the locust has eaten away from you, and we are about to get double for your trouble. You ought to give God a praise right there for the double that's about to come your way. For the double that's about to come your way. For how it's about to hit your house. How it's about to hit your bank account. How double is about to hit this church. It's coming, y'all. It's coming. Overturn, overturn, overturn. I feel that thing. I feel it. I got to move, but I, but, but I just encourage somebody. Horrible what you've been believing for is about to come into manifestation. If God told it to you, stand on the word. Believe his word. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Don't lose hope. Don't faint now for in due season. You shall reap if you faint not. Let me get you over here. Let me get you over here because I, I get over there and we won't even get to this text. Oh, my God. But but I just feel it. Somebody's about to walk in your reaping season. You've been you've been you've been you've been sowing. You've been sowing. You've been sowing. The Bible said they they sow in tears. Edible kosha. Shall reap in joy. Your your mental faculties. You've been under mental warfare. But I feel the release of the Holy Ghost right now, lifting that thing off of you right now. The mental warfare, the psychological warfare you've been going through, the anguish, the grief you've been holding, release it right now in the name of Jesus. Release it, release it, release it. Why can I release it, Pastor Will? Point number one, because he is my hiding place. He, he's my hiding place. That's what, that's what David said here. Well, they say David or Moses wrote this. It, it really doesn't matter to me because both men were, had, had the integrity and both men had the credentials to write about the protection of God. But, but, but it doesn't matter to me. All I need to know is that he's my hiding place. Whoever wrote it, thank you for writing it and telling me that he that abides in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow. Under the, under the shadow of the Almighty, under the shadow. Because can I tell, can I help somebody who might be watching and you might know? God is the secret place. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and when you dwell in the secret place, watch this, y'all. The word dwell means, watch this, y'all. It means to sit. It means to sit and to remain sitting. So, so the writer is saying, he who sits in the, secret place. He who remains sitting 
in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow. That's why he tells us in the book of Ephesians, you have been seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Can I help you with something? Don't allow anything to move you out of your seat. <clears throat> Don't allow anyone to move you out of your seat of dwelling. Because David said, in his presence, <laughs> there's fullness of joy, and at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. But let me take you a little deeper into this text real quick. Because when we talk about the secret place, those in the Old Testament would have understood what the, the type and shadow of this secret place was because it was understood as the most holy place. The most holy place was only to be entered in by the priest. Everybody couldn't go into the holy place. And when the priest went in there, he went in there to make offering or atonement for the sins of the people. But when he went into the most holy place, he had to put the blood on what's called the mercy seat. Now, the mercy seat was made out of gold with gold angels who had their heads bowed down, who had their feathers extended as such. And so it was as though when, when, when Aaron or the priesthood put the blood on the mercy seat, it was as though the angels was covering the blood or was casting a shadow over the offering to demonstrate that it had been that it had been accepted but what really let the children of Israel know that the blood was accepted was the shadow or the glory of God would come and dwell over the tabernacle edible kosha because God says when i see the blood I'm passing over. But the blood was the only thing that would satisfy you and I having access into the secret place of the Most High God. But how many know we're not under the old covenant no more? How many know that there's a new covenant? And Christ Jesus has entered into the veil, into the temple, and the veil of the temple was torn from the top to the bottom, and he's now given us access to boldly come to the throne of mercy in our time of trouble that we might receive the protection of God. So watch this, y'all. So his shadow, because he says this, you shall abide under the shadow, under the shadow, under the shadow. The shadow is an image of the person that light is reflecting from. And because he is light, he cast a shadow over his children. Watch what he says in Psalms 121. He says, the Lord is your shade. He's your shadow on your right side. And the sun shall not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. Because God is your shade. Somebody type, he's my shade. He's, he's my shade. He, he, he covers me in this season that I'm going through. God, I need you to cover me. In the stuff that I'm dealing with, God, I need you to cover me. In the, with all the stuff I'm dealing with on my job and what we're dealing with in society, God, I need you to sh be shade for me. Cover me, God. Just lead me to point number two. So if you're going to be in the secret place, watch this. What are you saying? That's what it says right here. I will say of the Lord. He is my refuge, my fortress, and my God. In him will I trust. What are you saying about your God? Because, because everybody can't say the same thing because you can only speak about God based on your experience with God. And not everybody has the same experience with you. But, but I'm more concerned that they start talking like you and you don't talk like them. He said here, I will say, he made it personal. He is my refuge. I, I don't know. I don't know what he is to anybody else. I don't know what he is to the, to the Moabites. I don't know what he is to the Gergesites. I don't, I don't know what he is to the Hivites. But, 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 but for me, <laughs> he is my refuge, my fortress. He is my, he is my God. If he's your God, type on the screen, he, he's my God. You got to be able to open up your mouth in the midst of what you're going through and still declare who God is. Still declare the power of God over your life. 
still lift up his name, still magnify his name, still say he's my healer, still say he's my provider, still say he's my miracle worker, still say he's my way maker, because it's what you say about God that gets you out of what you're going through. Watch this. During this season of your life, be careful what comes out of your mouth. Magnify your God more than you speak about your problem. Lift him up more than you are lifting up the issue or lifting up the problem or lifting up the diagnosis or lifting up the problem. Lift his name on high because he is the only one who can turn it on a dime. And that's why I told you God is turning some things. But watch what you say in the midst of this turn. Watch this, y'all. Point number three, he shall deliver you. You have a promise that he's going to deliver you. Why you say that? It's right here in verse 3, Pastor Will. He says, surely he would deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. In other words, he would deliver you from hidden and unexpected attacks. Because, because a snare is a trap that you don't see. Yeah. And the enemy always likes to set traps for the believers that we don't see. And next thing you know, you done walked into something that you didn't even know was there. But can I tell you, God's going to deliver you from the very trap that you almost fell in. Even though it was hidden, God is going to reveal it to you so you don't even fall into it. That's the delivering power of God. He don't have to deliver you out of it. He can even deliver you from not even getting into it because God will show you prior to. That's why you got to have the discernment of the Lord. That's why you got to be able to discern who's for you and who's not for you. That's why you have to be able to discern, is this for me? Is this not for me? Are they for me? Are they? You have to have a discernment in your spirit. Look what he says. He says, oh, the noisome pestilence. Watch this, y'all. The noisome pestilence is defined as something that's, that's offensive to the senses and especially the sense of smell. Does that sound familiar? A pestilence is defined as a contagious or an infectious disease that it affects the entire community. And I come here to tell somebody tonight that God would deliver us and save us from anything that's hidden, anything that's unexpected. He'll deliver us from any trap and he'll deliver us from any plague. No plague is greater than our God. I know what CNN says. I know what Fox says. I know what WAFB says. I know what WBRC says. And thank God for the news people. But, God, but they're not greater than what the word of God says. And we'll follow all of the CDC guidelines and we'll do all that. But we go follow the word of God. And the word of God trumps any disease. For he was wounded. For our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him but by his stripes we are healed the bible says how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power who went about doing good healing all who were oppressed by the devil the bible talks about how jesus went out healing all who were, were oppressed with sickness and disease he has the power, church. He has the power to deliver. I don't care if you got an addiction in your life. I speak to that addiction and tell that addiction, God can deliver you from that thing. Whatever that thing that's got you hung up, God can deliver you. It was an unexpected attack, but God can deliver you, Steve. God can pull you out of that very thing. And when God pulls you out of it, watch this, y'all. He will hide you. He will hide you. That's what he says right here in verse 4. He shall cover thee with feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be like a shield and a buckler. When, when it says he will cover thee with feathers, it's speaking metaphorically as a hen brooding over her chicks, protecting her young chicks from danger. And God then is like a shield and a buckler, which suggests that there's spiritual warfare that God is protecting us from because that's what a shield does. That's what a buckler does. It stops the enemy from penetrating. And God will say, in order for it to get to you, it's got to get past me first. That's why I told you earlier, he's a wall. He's, he's fortification. And, and he will cover you with his feathers. Watch this. He'll keep you hidden. 
He'll keep you hidden from it. What's bothering everybody else won't bother you. What's destroying everybody else won't destroy you. It may be happening to them, but it won't happen to you. Why? Because I'm covered. He, he, he hides me, as, as David says in Psalms 27. For in the time of trouble, he, he shall what? He shall hide me, watch this, and set me high up on a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up high above my enemies around me. And I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Why am I singing praises? Because he hid me from the attack of the enemy. Why? Why am I singing praises in his tabernacle? Because he set me high upon a rock. Because what I understand is that God will hide you, then God will reposition you. Yeah. He hides you to reposition you. That's what he says. He shall hide me and then he will set me high up on a rock. Well, why are you hiding me and then setting me high for me to be seen? Unless when you hide me, you take care of the enemy that's coming against me. And now when you set me on a rock, you have delivered me from the very thing. And now my head is lifted up above. He said, it's lifted up above all my enemies uh, around me. Can, can, can I tell you what God does? Can I tell you what God does using an using a old hood game we used to play? God uses, use, uses you and I, and God plays hide and go seek. Yeah, y'all remember that? These, these kids today, they, they don't know too much about hide and go seek like we used to because we used to go outside. We used to go outside and, and play outside till, till the street lights came on. These, these kids stay in the house. They video games and all this other stuff. They don't know what outside, they don't know what fresh air is. But, but we used to play a game called hide and go seek. And, and, and the premise of the game was one person was it. And the person that was it had to count to a certain number and everybody went and hid. And the person that was it had to go try to find everybody. See, when God hides you, the devil goes trying to find you. The devil goes trying to look in places that he thinks that you used to be, but God said they're not there anymore because I delivered them. They, they don't hang over there because I delivered them. In the old spot that they used to be in, they're not there no more. And the enemy, the Bible says, goes about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. But when God has moved you and elevated you, you're not in the same places. Watch this, y'all. My grandkids, my grandkids, when, when they're at my house, they, they play the game hide-and-go-seek as well. And they know that my room, for a certain part, is off limits. But when they play hide-and-go-seek, and they done run out of hiding places, they'll come in my room, and they'll say, gee, Daddy, gee, Daddy, can you hide me and not tell nobody where I am? And so I'll say, okay, I'll hide you. I'll hide you. I won't tell anybody where you are. And my grandson might go hide behind the door. And my granddaughters will come in, and they'll say, gee, Daddy, gee, Daddy, have you seen Jackson? Have you seen Jackson? And I'll be like, no, I hadn't seen Jackson. They say, well, we saw him come in here. I said, well, no, I didn't see Jackson come in here. Jackson is not in here. All the while, Jackson is hiding behind the door. And just like I wouldn't give Jackson up, God doesn't give you up to the enemy. God will never give your location away to the enemy because when he hides you, he sets you in a place to while he goes to handle and deal with your enemy. So when you come out, the enemy you saw before, <laughs> you won't see no more. And that's why you don't need to be afraid. You don't need to be afraid of the enemy. You don't need to be afraid of what's going on around us. Why do you say that, Pastor Will? It's right here in verse 5 and 6. He says, thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor the arrow that flieth by day nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth away at noonday. Look what he says, y'all. He says, the attack of the terror by night of the pestilence are the attacks that the enemy brings that you don't see coming. The arrow that flies by day and wasteth at noonday, those are the attacks that the enemy wants you to see. The devil wants you through your eye gate to become fearful of what you see and what you hear. But can I tell you, don't be afraid of what's in the air. 
Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of the arrow that flies by day or the terror that flies by night. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Why? Because he told Joshua in Joshua 1 and 9, be strong and very courageous. Do not be afraid nor dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And I come to remind somebody tonight that God is with you. God is with us even during this pandemic, even through these economic times. God is still with you, and you don't have to be afraid of the attack that you don't see coming or the attack that you do see coming. You have to believe that God is still in control. He's still He's still in control. He's, he's omniscient. He's omnipresent. He's, he's all-knowing. And he's all-sufficient. Nothing, nothing gets by God without God allowing it to happen. Everything that happened, God knows. That's why the Bible says in Deuteronomy, the secret things, the secret things, they, they belong to God. So if you're not going to be afraid, I need you to do something. If you're not going to be afraid, I need you to do something. What, is, what do you need me to do, Pastor Will? I need you to make your declaration. I need you to make a declaration because the enemy has shook you by bringing something unexpected. He has shook you by causing you to see something. But, but this is when you tell the devil, I'm not afraid of you no more. You make a declaration and this is the declaration you make. A thousand may fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. <laughs> It might be happening around me, devil, but it won't happen to me, devil, because the devil thinks that the attack will silence you. And I come to tell somebody, we taking you off mute tonight. We taking you off mute tonight. We taking you off a low frequency tonight. We taking you up a little higher because when you're under attack, there's a sound that you have to make. There's a sound that emanates out of you. And that's why Paul and Silas, when they were in prison, that's why Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the moment they start praying, and the moment they start praising, the Bible says, and suddenly the bands were loose. Everyone's bands were loose. Everybody in the prison got free because Paul and Silas opened up their mouth. And I come to tell you that when you open up your mouth right now and you make a declaration that it shall not come nigh thee, that is not coming near my house. That no firmity go come near me. No sickness is coming near me. No lack is going to come near me. You set somebody else free. Somebody else gets loosed because you open up your mouth and take you about 15 seconds to just open up your mouth and declare, it's not going to come near me. It's not going to come nigh thee. It's not coming near my home. It's not coming near my children. It's not coming near my job. It's not coming near my spouse. It's not coming on my family. A thousand might fall over here. Ten thousand, but it's not. It's not. It's not coming nigh me. It's not. It's not coming next to me. It's not. Don't get near to me. Why? Because the God I serve He's a battle axe in a time of war. The God I serve, he's a, he's a fortification wall built around me. The God that I serve, he shelter in a time of storm. The God that I serve will protect me, will keep me from fault. The God that I serve, he won't let it come nigh. Type on your screen. It's not. It's not gonna come nigh thee. It's not. It's not gonna come nigh thee. It's not. It's not gonna come nigh. It's not. It's not gonna come nigh thee. You need. You need to hear yourself say that. Say it out to my. It's not coming nigh thee. It's not coming. Walk around your house and say it's not coming nigh thee. Your kids ain't gonna understand. Your spouse ain't gonna understand. But just lay hands on. It's not coming nigh thee. Your children gotta go to school. It's not coming nigh thee. Your children gotta get on the bus. It's not coming nigh. It's not coming nigh thee. It's not coming. It's not coming nigh thee. Watch this, y'all. Point number seven. Point number seven. We're going to stay right there in that vein. It's not going to hit your house. What you mean, Pastor Will? Look at verse 10. There shall no evil befall thee. <laughs> Neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. It's not coming near my children. It's not coming near my house. 
Ain't no evil going to be up in here. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there shall be liberty. I declare and decree, we cast out every imagination and every high thing that tries to exalt itself above the knowledge of God, but we bring it into subjection under the captivity of Jesus Christ. We declare and decree, no evil shall be in your house. We declare and decree, no devil in hell shall run around in your house. We declare and decree that as for you and your house, you shall serve the Lord. We declare and decree that nothing shall happen in your house that is not ordained by God. No evil can come near. So I speak peace in your home. I speak healing in your home. I speak restoration in your home. I speak deliverance to hit your home. It won't come near my house. No plague, no plague, no plague, no plague, no plague, no plague, no plague. I remember, y'all, I remember, I remember, I remember my father-in-law used to take this scripture, Psalms 91. And he told me when I first moved in my house in 1998, and we had a little rodent problem. He said, Will, take this Bible, and I want you to walk around your house seven times walk around the outer perimeter of your house listen to me y'all he said and read psalm 91 i was a babe in christ i didn't know anything i just took him at his word because i believed in the assurance of god's word so i took the bible and i read psalm 91 walking around my property seven times as my father-in-law told me seven times like the children of of israel walked around jericho wall on the seventh day the wall came tumbling down and seven times i was walking and i was like lord no plague shall come near thy dwelling no evil shall befall thee lord nothing shall come nigh thee god god i thank you and declare and decree and i tell y'all what on the on the seventh day after i did it i had an expectation that i wasn't gonna have a rodent issue that i had an expectation that I wasn't going to have to worry about these rodents that was coming from a field that was next to my house. And all of a sudden, I start seeing dead rodents all around my house because I believe the word of the Lord. I stood on the word of the Lord by faith. And that's what I tell you to do. Take that word. Walk around your house. No evil shall befall thee. There may be chaos in your home. There may be chaos on your job. But walk around it. Even if you have to do it under your breath, no evil shall befall thee. It shall not not come near thy dwelling. It shall not come near thy house. It shall not come against my habitation. It shall not come near thy children. You open up your mouth and you make a declaration that it won't come near my dwelling. Why, Pastor Will? Point number eight, and I got to get on out of here in a couple of minutes. The reason that you can make a declaration like that is because God has given his angels assignment over you. He said, verse 11 and 12, he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear their, thee up in their hands, lest thy dash thy foot against the stone. God's angels, in other words, they go bear you up. They go keep you from falling. They not, they not go let you fall. No matter what the devil has tried to do to you, no matter how he's tried to pull you left and right, no matter how he's tried to separate you from the love of God, the reason that he couldn't do it is because them angels been bearing you up. Them angels been giving you the strip to stand. Them angels been giving you the strip to go forward, to take one step forward. Them angels been giving you the ability to move like you ain't never moved before. And the devil might have tried it, but you still here. Because he ain't got power over God. He ain't got power over God's angels. And he don't have power over you. Because God said, I'm going to give my angels charge. There's angels charge over your life. That's why the car crash didn't kill you. Because the angels were there. That's why the gunshot didn't kill you. Because the angels was there. That's why the knife wound didn't penetrate even deeper. Because the angels was there. That's why you didn't overdose. Because the angels were there to pull you out. Because there's a greater calling on your life. And God said, I've given my angels charge over you. And they go bear you up in your hand, in their hand, to prevent you from smashing or dashing your foot against a stone. God go keep you, church. God's preserving us, church. This is the assurance of the protection of God to the believer. Look what he's going to do, y'all. And then he's going to give you power over it. The very thing 
that the enemy was trying to use to cause you to smash your foot against the stone. God said, I'm going to give you power over it. Why you say that, Pastor Will? Right here in verse 13, thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon, shall thou trample under feet. God said, the thing that the enemy was trying to use, I'm going to put it under your foot. I'm going to give you authority over it. I'm going to let you walk on what should have killed you. I'm going to let you walk on what should have took you out. I'm going to let you walk on what should have depressed you. I'm going to let you walk on what should have made you suicidal. I'm going to make you walk on what should have caused you to lose your mind. I'm going to make you walk on what should have caused y'all to divorce. God said, I'm going to make you walk on it because I'm going to put it under your feet and I'm going to give you power over the very thing that thought it could take you out. Somebody type on that screen. I got power over it. I got, I got power. I got power over it. It's under, it's under my, it's under my feet. It's under my feet. It's under my feet. Your foot is a place of authority. It's under your foot. You got, you got to put your foot on that thing. You got, you got to put your foot down on it in the name of Jesus. And you, you got to know that he's giving you power over it in the name of in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I dare you, I dare you, whatever that thing is that's coming against you, I dare you, I dare you, I dare you just to say, it's under my feet, it's under my feet, it's under my feet, it's under my feet, it's under there, it's under my feet, it's under my feet, it's under my feet, and, I, and this time, I ain't letting it get up, this time, this time, this time I ain't relinquishing it, this time I'm not going to fall prey to it again, this time I'm not going to give in to it, because I got power over it in the name of Jesus. Watch this, y'all. Now, now we're going to get out of here. I got five minutes. I'm going to get up out of here, but I got to give you these last three points because I need you to see something in the text has happened. In verse 14 and 16, something has changed. The, the, the person talking has changed. In, in verses 1 through 13, the psalmist is talking. But now in 14 through 16, God is talking. Hey, yeah. See, whenever, whenever you start talking, you, you just write this down as sidebar. Whenever you start talking about the goodness of God, whenever you start lifting up God and magnifying God's name, whenever you do that, you get God's attention. And then the next thing you know, God will start speaking through you prophetically. You better listen to what I'm telling you. Watch this. How do you say that, Pastor Will? Because you go right here in verse 14. He said, because he has set his love upon me. This God talking about man now, the believer. Therefore, I will deliver him, talking about the believer, and I will set him high because he has known my name. Set your love and affection on God. Don't let nothing separate you from the love of God. Give God your whole heart. With, your, with my whole heart, I serve you, God. Serve him with your whole heart. Serve him with gladness. Give him, give him everything, no matter what it looks like. That's why David said, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continuously be in my mouth because, Lord, I love you. I love you with everything. I love you with all my heart because you didn't have to do it, but you did. You, you didn't have to die for me, but you did. You didn't have to save me, but you did. You didn't have to deliver me, but you did. And for that reason, God, I love you. I love you, God. Look what he says. He said, because he loved me, I'm going to deliver him, and I'm going to set him on high because he has known my name. And I'm declaring to you, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life because you love him. Goodness and mercy is following you, church. Next point, don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. That's what he says right here. This is God talking. God is telling you, don't stop praying. In verse 15, he, talking about the believer, shall call upon me. And I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him. And I will honor him. When we pray to God, prayer is a personal invitation for God to get involved with the thing that's troubling you. So when I pray, I believe he's going to answer me because God comes and get in the middle of my trouble. And he delivers me out of my trouble. And he honors me in spite of my trouble. And so as a believer, you have to begin to pray and believe that God is still a prayer answering God. Because my last point as we close out of here, God is not through with you yet. Because the last promise of, of Psalm 91 is this. With long life, I will satisfy thee and show you my salvation. And you need to declare over your life that God is not through with me yet. 
that God is not finished writing the chapters of my life, the story of my life, and with long life he shall satisfy me. I shall live and I shall not die, and I shall declare the word of the Lord. I know some people are falling on this side and that, but as for me, I shall live and not, I shall live and not, and not die. Why? Because I'm safe. I'm safe in his arms. And that's where we are tonight. You have the assurance from God that he's going to protect you, that he's going to hide you, that he's going to cover you, that he's going to keep you safe because you're abiding in the secret place of the Most High. You abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for your protection. We thank you for the assurance of your protection. We thank you, God, that even when we can't feel you, God, we know that you're there. Because you said you'll never leave us nor forsake us, but you'll be with us even until the end of the world. And Lord, we thank you for the things that you're turning around and working for our good right now. We praise you in advance for the blessings that's on the way, for the prayer answers that's on the way, for the change that's on the way. We bless your holy name. We magnify you, honor you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And amen. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, what a wonderful night to come up under the umbrella, to come up under the shadow of the Almighty by simply giving your heart and your life to him. If you do not know him as Lord and Savior of your life, type in that screen on the comment section. I want to give my life to God. Secondly, if you're believing, you straight away. Remember I told you, he's still giving his angels charge over you. Lest you dash your foot against the stone. He's he wants to bear you back up. If that's you, you said I straight away, but I want to rededicate my life back to God. Type in the screen. I want to rededicate my life back to God. Thirdly, you desire to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I told you he gave you power over it. He said, I give you power to be a witness unto me. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world. And according to Acts 2 and 4, the Holy Ghost fell, and all that were in the room were filled with the Holy Spirit. If you desire to be filled with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, type on the screen, I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Somebody's going to get in contact with you. And last but not least, if you'd like to become a member with us here at Living Faith Christian Center, you say, hey, I want to be a part of this church. Even if you live out of town, you can still be a part of our family by simply saying, I want to become a member of this church. Type any one of those for salvation, rededication, Feel with the Holy Spirit to become a member of this church. Somebody from our church is going to connect with you so we can get you the proper information so you can continue or start your walk with God because we know that we have an assurance from God that he will protect us, cover us, and keep us. That's what we know, and that's what we stand on, and that's our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We thank you for any decision that you made to become part of the family of God. Now it's time to give at Live in Faith Christian Center. If you are a member or you're a first-time viewer and you would like to give electronically and sow a seed into this ministry, whether that's your tithing offering or you just want to sow a seed, then you can go on our website to www.livingfaith-cc.org. And on our website, you will see a page that says, uh, a link that says donate. Click on that link. It's going to open up with fields for you to put information in. And once you've done that, then you'll be able to give electronically. For those of you who would like to text to give, you can text any dollar amount that you would like to phone number 225-239-4229. Again, that's 225-239-4229. Also, for those of you that would like to send in your tithe or your offering and you want to make out a check or money order, you can make your check or money order payable to LFCC. And you can send that to Living Faith Christian Center, 6375 Winborn Avenue, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, 70805. And last but not least, for those of you that live in the Baton Rouge and the surrounding area, and you would like to bring your tithe and offering to our physical location here at 6375 Winborn, when you pull up on the property on the west side of our building, you will see a tithe and offering receptacle where you can fill out your tithe and offering slip. And while you fin when you finish filling it out, you will see a tithe and offering mail slot that you can slide your tithe and offering in. We thank you for the seed that you sow in this ministry, and we speak increase over you because the word of God says that wealth and riches shall be in your house, and God shall increase you more and more. Thank you for the seed that you sow on tonight. We bless God for you. Now let us have the benediction. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the word on tonight. We thank you that you are an awesome God, a mighty God, a God that will protect us. We thank you for the protection that we find in you. 
as we abide under the shadow of the Almighty, we want to give you praise, honor, and glory. Father, we thank you that as we leave this place, we never leave your presence while we're absent one from another. Make your face shine down on us. Bless us as your people. Continue to give your angels charge over our lives to keep us in all of our ways. And we be forever careful to give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. See you on Sunday at 930 for those of you that will be joining us live and those of you be watching online. And then for those of you who only watch us on Wednesday night, we see you next Wednesday night at this same time. God bless you. God keep you as our prayer. Until next time.